It's 4.30 a.m. and Kyle Knopf is already on the road. At this early hour, he's looking for the trail of the biggest cat in Canada, the cougar. When we cut a, a track, either male or female, sometimes it takes us several days to, to catch up to that animal to figure out where it's gone, particularly if we cut a track that's a little bit old um, and the animal's moved off quite a distance from where we initially find it. So. What we've got here is a big tom cougar track, and it uh, looks like maybe one we could, maybe we can even chase this one today. and his partner, Alia Adams, left Edmonton in 2005 to live on the outskirts of the small village of Nordegg, Alberta, not far from the Banff and Jasper National Parks. Their aim was to have front row seats to study cougar behavior more closely. We like being outside. We very much enjoy um, working with animals and, and observing both their behavior um, directly and indirectly, in this case, as we, as we visit the clusters and, and observe their behavior on maps through, through uh, the GPS collars. So we, we really enjoy that, doing that together. What we were just doing there was using our telemetry equipment to look for cougar. Um, and we were able actually to pick up three this time, two of our big toms and one of our females just behind me here, down in this large basin. My portion of the study focuses especially on predator-prey interactions. Um, so I'm looking at um, composition of the prey in cougar diet, um, the amount of prey that cougar are taking per year. Um, and also, as part of that study, I'm looking at population size of cougar. And uh, because that has an impact on what prey they kill. After identifying the sector where one of the cougars is located, Kyle and Alia, along with their dog Drake, must now find the place where it has concealed its prey. That's no easy task, given that the cougar moves over a very large territory. The female's territory is about 100 square kilometers, and the male's is 600 to 1,000 square kilometers. Like true detectives, the trio covers huge distances in order to find the trail of a creature which is only seen in the wild with great difficulty. Drake actually is a great help. If he finds it, he'll pick up a leg, usually, or something, and he'll bring it back, and then we'll know he's found it, and then we'll just follow him back to where he's got it at. Okay, almost there. We always carry um, bear spray um, ourselves and the crew um, whenever we're in the field. Um, we're especially cautious though when we're going into sites where we know there's a kill. Um, and the large males will often kill big ungulate prey, so sometimes wild horses weighing up to a thousand pounds, large moose. Alia, it's a super tight center. For Kyle, studying the behavior of the cougar represents a challenge. It's almost impossible to capture them in summer. Even if they discover trails, they have to wait for winter to be sure of the freshness of the tracks in the snow. Throughout the ages, the cougar has been hunted because it attacked cattle and sometimes humans. In eastern Canada, it was long thought that it almost died out. But in Quebec, between 1955 and 2000, some 200 sightings were recorded. Marc Gauthier has been tracking cougar since the early 1990s. 
he's been trying to obtain irrefutable proof of its presence in Quebec. Although there were a lot of sightings, proof was becoming more and more rare, or completely non-existent. We started to think about how we could make detection of the cougar easier, and in the end we said, why don't we attract it to us, rather than running after it all the time? We know that cougars are animals with large territories, and they're felines that use pheromones to communicate with each other. After years of research, Mark discovered a pheromone which attracts cougar, but not other felines. All he now had to do was collect tangible proof of its presence in the field. The cougar that smells the scent here will simply come and mark its territory. So, it will come and rub against the post, and as it rubs, it will leave some hairs. We collect the hairs, if there are any, and send them to the lab for DNA testing. The cougar is one of three wildcat species in Canada. It's bigger than the bobcat and the Canada lynx. There are said to be between 50 and 60,000 cougars in North America, with the highest densities on Vancouver Island and in California. In the Canadian Rockies, there are around 6,000 individuals. We catch about 15 cougar, 15 to 20 cougar each winter and we're out hunting for cougar almost every day, from kind of mid-November all the way through to mid-April. We're out looking for cougar. Every day? Every single day. Except for Christmas. Except for Christmas, yeah, we take Christmas off. For Kyle and Alia, following the cougar's trail requires a lot of effort, time, and above all, constant vigilance. Once the tracks are found, the adventure starts. They now have to find and capture this ferocious champion of camouflage in absolute safety. Well, on a project like this, it takes quite a bit of, uh, of effort to, to make it successful. And so Alia and myself uh, work every day and uh, we also have a crew of between four and six volunteers at any one time. After breakfast, Kyle and the team prepare for a day which will be a long one, even for Drake who has to stay at home. And, uh, the reason that Drake can't chase cougars is that he's uh, way too fast and not loud enough. However, a cougar is, is much bigger and stronger than a dog, so if you have a very fast dog like Drake, who's also quiet, who runs into the cougar, uh, then the situation is, is very much reversed and the cougar is likely to kill the dog. The team meets up at the spot where the most recent tracks were found. Yeah. Kyle and Alia check all the routes that the cougar could take during the chase, especially if it's an inhabited area. Lorne Hinbo has worked with Kyle for two years. With his dogs, specially trained plot hounds, he helps the team to track the cougar. Normally, a, a cougar is very predictable. They'll They'll run away from the dogs for a little while, and then they will go up a tree or, or, or bay up in the rocks, but it, they're, they're generally, they don't cause any problems. I'll take you on an I'll take you on an I'll take you puts VHF collars on his dogs in order to follow their trail. The chase sometimes lasts for several hours, with the cougar being found dozens of kilometers from the starting point. Well, when we first started this study, I had no idea, uh, to be honest, exactly what I was doing. Um, I'd never captured a cougar before. I had some experience working with wolves, uh, so I did have some large carnivore experience. But uh, no, my first cougar capture experience was the very first one we put a collar on. And we've done uh, more than 40 captures now, so I've gained a lot of experience there. But uh, 
now I think that we have things a little bit more figured out, but uh, it's still quite a challenge every time you go out and try to catch catch a cougar. It's a real it's a real challenge. Dominic Grenier is taking part in a project with wolves for the University of Alberta and Alberta Fish and Wildlife, covering the same territory as Kyle. Even though he's allergic to cats and therefore very allergic to cougars, he never refuses an invitation to join a capture. A cougar capture is an incredible adrenaline rush. To see a cougar in a tree up close like that and to be able to handle the animal, that's really something unique. Once they reach the area where they think the female cougar is, Lorne sets his dogs off after her. Their task is to make the cougar climb into a tree. The team follows the tracks of the cougar and the dogs and the sounds of barking. But sometimes, things don't go as planned. Last year we uh, run into an occasion where we put the uh, dogs out on a, what we thought was a, uh, a female cougar with a kitten. I think it turned out to be the, uh, the female was maybe coming into into breeding season, and she had been followed by two big toms. And I think she was just in a really bad mood, that's my guess, but anyway, she, uh, she turned on my two hounds, Bonnie's brothers, and, uh, well, it was kind of a sad night when we got in there. Um, both dogs had been killed. Uh, both skulls had been crushed. So that that, but in in all my years of of, of working, it's been uh, that's been the only negative there with the with the cougars. Often when the dogs are chasing the cougar, when they're on the trail of the cougar, they're barking on the way, but it's always in bursts. Then when they arrive at the tree, and the cougar's in the tree, and they're at the base of it, then the barking is constant. But it's Lorne who knows his dogs best. He's often the one who says to us, it's tree, let's go guys. After walking for several hours, Kyle, Alia, and the whole team finally join the dogs at the foot of a tree. Basically, we're just trying to analyze the situation. We can see that the cougar will probably stay in that tree, so we'll just quietly start. Alia and Kyle will get the drug ready. Alia prepares the drug and Kyle will prepare his rifle. The houndsman and the technicians will quietly bring back the dogs and tie them up so that we just have the cougar in the tree. So we get everyone in place to make sure the animal's safe and also the dogs and everyone before taking the shot to put the cougar to sleep. At that point, at least one or two people set off following the tracks of the cougar. The cougar has been drugged, so we don't let the dogs go after it. After a few minutes of searching, Alia finds the female cougar. She makes sure the animal is properly asleep, and then they take various samples and fit a GPS collar to her, which will allow them to follow the feline's trail. 
There hadn't been a cougar study in Alberta now for almost 10 years. And so there's been a lot of changes in the province in, in terms of cougar populations, or at least perceived changes in terms of cougar populations. Um, in fact, they're a very difficult species to monitor. So nobody knew for sure, but there'd been more sightings, uh, more depredation incidents on livestock, and there'd also been an increase in the number of cougar that uh, have been hunted in the province. In Quebec, thanks to the hair collectors installed by Marc Gauthier, they've confirmed the presence of five cougars. There are two in Forio National Park in Gaspésie. There's another one in Gaspésie, also near Gaspésie Park. There's another one in Estrie, one in Sergene la saint jean near Montvala Park. So that's about it for the cougars detected so far in Quebec. So there's really no doubt that cougar numbers are growing in Quebec. In Western Canada, with the ending of bounty hunting, the density of cougar started increasing in the 1960s as the animal gradually took back the natural habitat it had been driven from. Out of the 40 captures made by Carl and Alia since 2005, a number of them have been close to inhabited areas. Consequently, they've wondered if this proximity represented a danger and if coexistence with humans was possible. You said that it was a female? Yeah, it's a, it's a female. She's a, a, a young female. So she's uh, uh, just probably about three years old, um, big and healthy, and she just made a deer kill um, down in that woodlot there, just mm -hmm. about, oh, maybe about 500. 500 or 600 meters south of your place here, right in the middle between the two roads there. Between, okay. And uh, so she'll probably be in there feeding on that for the next, uh, I guess, two or three days, and then she'll move on. Cougars can present quite a number of risks. They can present a risk to an individual, to a human. They can present a risk, you know, in a, in, to a pet, so they could kill somebody's pet, and they present a risk to livestock. They can, they can and do kill livestock, and they they've killed people before too so um, people should be very cautious with cougar it's not something that you want to um, take lightly that it coexisting with cougar so the main reason why we leave them out here is uh, is because you know what we're trying to do is learn something so we know already that there's a big population out here and so we really only have two options one exterminate all of them or else understand what they're doing so that we can improve safety for people and livestock and so in Alberta, especially with our booming economy, we have you know, lots and lots of people moving here every year. It's rapidly growing and people have money and they're buying up parcels of land everywhere. And so we have definitely begun to encroach on places that were traditionally considered wilderness areas. And this has a lot of potential risks for wild animals living in those areas. Well, you know, people and cougar have been coexisting for, you know, centuries, you know, um, thousands of years. It's important that we recognize that we're part of the natural ecosystem and, and we're in cougar country and cougars are in our country. And I don't think there's a strong um, line between the two. The increase in cougars is also being felt elsewhere in Canada, in Quebec, Marc Gauthier wonders about the provenance of the animals recorded in recent years. Could they have a link with those from the west of the country, or are they of a completely different origin? There's nothing to say that the last cougar was really captured in 1938. Possibly there were others, and it's possible that descendants from that population survived until now. There's also the possibility of migration from west to east. The density of cougars in the West is increasing. The density of humans is also increasing. So there's pressure for cougars to migrate from West to East as long as the territories are of good quality for cougar. There are more forests today in Quebec than there used to be 100 years ago, for example. And then there's a number of individuals who escaped from captivity. So there's a bit of a mystery. 
Where have the cougars we're currently observing in Quebec come from? While preparing the equipment for another day's work, Kyle receives a call. Prairie, a female he's been studying for two years, has been killed by a hunter. The young man is deeply shaken by the news, particularly as it's the first time he's lost one of his cougars. When you study the everyday lives of the animals for a year or more, you do grow, uh, you, you know, you sort of start to get to know them a little bit. Um, and as a researcher, you probably should detach yourself from that. But as a human being, it's all, you know, almost impossible to not, uh, to not get a little tiny bit attached to some of these animals sometimes. So, yeah, it's uh, mixed feelings, obviously. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we got a lot of good data from that cat. And, and, you know, even in her death, she provided us with lots of interesting information that'll help us uh, understand better how to manage these things in the future for cougar. Managing the future for Cougar is Carl and Alia's motivation for their research. But their project is drawing to a close. They'll make a few more captures before the end of the winter and then return to live in Edmonton. Leaving Cougar country will be a big wrench. How will I survive in Edmonton? Well, that's another really good question. I don't know. <laughs> we. Uh, Ali and I have been living here uh, studying cougar now for uh, the better part of, of oh, well, two and a half years almost now. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience. And to go, to have to leave this place will be a great challenge. I mean, it's, uh, it's been just fabulous, everything about it. <laughs>